Namaskar. In today's Pragya Nugget, this session, we will address something very interesting. As you know, at the end of each hour, each of our Upasana sessions, Pranlila Upasana sessions, we discuss these small uh, Pragya Nuggets or Wisdom Nuggets, as we call them. The issue that I want to address today is something very interesting. We all come across this problem of being committed to a path. A path really is, is we often term, use the term sadhana or deep committed practice. There isn't really a very definitive translation that I've come across for the word sadhana. But really the term sadhana in India means a deep committed practice. Something that you engage in in order to make it a very habit. Uh, a, a, make it a habit or a very part of your own being. So deep committed practice is, is the simplest way that I can describe it. Sadhana, I will use that term very often. What is it that prevents us or takes us away from the path of sadhana very often? We see that uh, in order to address certain problems in life, we get into a path. We start some practice or some sadhana. Now this could be as simple as going to the gym, going for a jog every day or, you know, thrice a week or getting into some exercise routine or a dietary pattern or, uh, or, or just starting some spiritual practices, praying. It could be any of these affirmations. You know, there are hundreds of available practices all around us and uh, we often enroll ourselves, sign up for these programs and we think that we are going to get results. Of course we think and that is why and we are promised results and very often we also get these results. It's not that we don't get these results. The problem is that even after getting the results, even though we see that we are, you know, moving towards success, very often we find a lack of motivation to continue. Sometimes it so happens that you have a target, you meet the target and because you've completed the target, you feel that, oh, I've got the result and then you leave it. And then again, you swing back to where you were. This happens very often in weight loss programs, but it's also common in other kind of health management program, whether you're trying to manage your diabetes or sugar levels or, you know, whatever it may be. Now, the question is, why does this happen? There must be, must be some specific reason why we are unable to sustain our motivation for many programs. Well, it's, it's also, also agreed upon and understood, and, and there's research which proves this, that most healthcare programs fail because one of the, one of the primary reasons have, or are factors uh, is lack of compliance to the program. This is something that healthcare professionals always talk about, lack of compliance. What is it that prevents us from complying with programs? What is it that takes us back or sets us away back from where we started? In the beginning, we have motivation, then we don't have. Sometimes we may feel that because we are not getting the results we wanted, well, that the reason is obvious. Then you dump a program that's obvious. But sometimes even when you are getting the results, it's very difficult to sustain the program. Now, I will propose a particular reason today and I want all of you to think about it and, and really go deep within yourself and think whether that reason is valid or not. And if you think that reason is valid, then next time onwards, whenever you choose a path, you should factor this in. Now, the reason I'm proposing why we are unable to sustain ourselves in a sadhana or in a practice that we decide to follow is that we are not even connected, connected with what we want. We think we want something. We believe we want something, but I'm saying that is not really what we want.
The problem is that we are not even connected with our real need or our real want. We are not connected and hence we, we fool ourselves. We kind of chase a, a wrong goal. I wouldn't say a wrong goal, but a goal which is not really our deepest goal. We chase shallow goals. For example, I, I mean, let me explain this with a very, very specific example that will probably help you to get what I'm trying to say. Let's take weight loss as an example because that's the most common one. You know the yo-yo the problem that is you start a program, a weight loss program, you get results and then you swing back and again, you know, get gain back weight because you couldn't follow that diet pattern or you lost motivation, etc. Something that we were already talking about. Now, I am saying that you have signed up for a weight, weight loss program and let's assume it's working for you. You were 80, 80 kilos, you know, in pounds you were whatever, let's say 140 pounds and you wanted to come down to 120 pounds or, or 110 pounds. That was your goal, your target. And let's say the program that you have signed up for is delivering this target. You are moving towards this target. So within three months, you are now from 80, you have set up to become 62, you are now 70. And lo and behold, you know, time is as time is passing, you are moving towards your target of 62. It's very possible and it happens all the time that despite this happening, you lose your motivation. And I'm saying that happens because weight loss was not what you wanted in the first place. You thought you wanted your weight to become correct, the, get to the right point. You thought that would get you what you wanted. But actually, what you wanted was something else. What was it that you were really looking for? And that is the thesis for today's discussion. And I am proposing that what we really want all the time is simply to be easy and to be comfortable no matter what situation we find ourselves in. This is what we really want in life. To be easy and comfortable irrespective of the situation we find ourselves in. But because we don't get there, in, in Indian traditional languages this is often called the, the state of Satchidanand means you are in a state of bliss. Masti is the term that is used. Now that bliss doesn't mean that you are always laughing and ecstasy and all that, but it's just this, this ability to be easy and comfortable no matter what situation life presents you with. The example here is that you are in that weight loss program and you are getting results, but let's say you're driving. And especially this happens a lot in India. It might not happen in some of the other developed countries, but sometimes it happens there also. But in India, it happens a lot. You're driving and you're at a signal at a crossing and the le you have a free left turn. But there's some idiot at that point of time. You want to call this person idiot. And indeed, the person may be an idiot because he is blocking your way. This person has to go straight, but he's blocking your way. So you cannot take that left turn. And that's the time you're getting late for your meeting. And that's the time you start getting irritated. You start boiling inside. And you are muttering and you are getting agitated. Oh my, what is this man? He doesn't know what, you know, doesn't have sense and all that. And, and all that comes over. And inside you, you lose that place. And at that is the point, unknowingly, unknowingly, your motivation for your sadhana gets eaten up. It gets eroded. You don't know it's getting eroded then, but that is what happens. That is the point where you actually unknowingly project the problem, this problem, this is a problem, this onto your sadhana because sadhana was a difficult thing. It was hard work. It was not very natural to you when you started. So you were putting in diligent efforts to remain on the path. But now suddenly, even that hard work has not yielded the results that you really wanted. 
So at some level deep within you, the motivation to remain in that path gets eroded, unknowing to you. You don't connect these two together. But this is what happens. So unless we are really connected with our want, wants, but I really want to call it a want because it's a single want. Once you are, you've got that, then everything else falls in place. So unless you are connected with that want, you are chasing wants that are really not wants. They are intermediate, intermediate steps in order to reach that want. Yes, you need to maintain correct weight in order to experience bliss. Yes, but it's not vice versa. It's not that if you, if and only if you keep your weight in the right, uh, you know, right mark, you will experience bliss. That is not so. There are a whole lot of other things that, that come along with it for you to actually experience that, that ease and comfort in life always, always, at every moment, at any moment that arises, if you are experiencing ease and comfort, simple two words, ease and comfort, Just these two things, if your sadhana is not providing you the means to be there all the time, then you, it, it is very likely that you will, you will find yourself moving away from that sadhana today or tomorrow. And hence, when you are choosing a path, when you are committing your time, energy, effort, resources to, a, to choosing a particular path and going on it, make sure that it addresses all of this, which means your physical being, your energetic being, your mental being, your spiritual being, all of this. And it's not possible that you go to the gym for, for your physical well-being and you go to a, a pranic program for your energetic well-being and you run to a, to a certain psychological cl psychological class or... or for your mental well-being and then you run to your church or some other place for your spiritual well-being. You know, that would just split everything too much. It's not integrated enough. So the Fit for Life program, we try to address this problem. We, it's a very difficult sadhana. It's not easy. It's not easy. It takes a lot of commitment. And the most important thing is that you have to remain... You have to sustain yourself in that commitment, not just for a day or a week or years or, or for a lifetime, but for several lifetimes, as long as, as you are there. And once you know that you are just there, just there, always, already, it's then that you understand what your real need and want is. And then you stop chasing these intermediate goals these intermediate goals are then just intermediate goals in order to reach that real goal. And if your sadhana is taking you there, then you can be sure that you will not be split away from that sadhana very easily. And you will be able to sustain your motivation for your sadhana, for your practice. So uh, once again, the point is that the Fit for Life program is designed keeping in th this in mind. I'm not sure whether we are right there today itself or not but the it's an unending process we keep keep the design is a dynamic process so we keep improving upon the sadhana process itself also and we want everyone to participate in that improvement process as much as as gaining from the process itself so with that i would kind of wrap up today's today's this small uh, wisdom nugget as we call it i hope this will help you to sustain in this or whatever other sadhana you choose for yourself.